So we're uh, just shy of Shardlow. Um, and it's a beautiful day. It's the blue sky, the birds are singing. And big the, change from yesterday. And the motorway is humming. Actually, it's not the motorway. It's the Derby bypass. Didn't get much sleep last night, possibly because of the noise keeping George awake, because George was what kept us awake. But we got here last night yeah. in the rain, in the grey, and we were just exhausted, so we just stopped, even though we knew it wasn't the best place. Yeah, and we went to sleep, like, too early. We went to sleep at, like, seven. So the plan is to stay in Shadlow for a couple of days, but we're not in this mooring. I'm going to walk ahead and see if I can find a better mooring and then call Michael to come in. And then move ahead. Yeah. And, uh just past so there's two locks in front of us and we can't go past the second one because beyond that is the Shardlow flood block uh, flood gates um, which apparently as of last night well we don't really know as of yesterday no, but, but as of the day before yesterday everything we heard is that it's going down it's going down and there's been no more rain and there's no rain forecast so we should be able to go through on Wednesday which is when I hope to go through yeah we're kind of planning on heading up there to the air wash we're uh, we're going to have like a very short cruise video now it's a bit windy so you might not be able to hear me but I found this mooring for Michael just before the lock and I've told him he can come here and I'm going to walk on to see if it's any better uh, the only downside with this is he'll need pins but no big deal After saying that I was going to do one day cruise vlogs, this is actually a two day cruise vlog because... Because yesterday's cruise was so bloody short basically. <laughs> it was like not even half a mile. Yeah. We did look in this area to see if there was a nicer mooring but there wasn't so we just stayed up there. Yeah. So we've just come down Shardlow Lock to get some water because we had really good timing. Joe was walking George. There was a boat that came up off the water point so just as Joe came back she was able to help him work the locks. I was able to move in with a boat that just surfed and came up. down with us. Yeah. Turned out that boat was spinning around. So they were going back up and another boat was waiting to go back up with them. So yeah. it was perfect. But <laughs> the poor woman, we were talking all the way down. She was really lovely and she was like, oh, I need to turn around. I've never turned around before. My last words to her, <laughs> to her were, don't worry, you'll be fine. Yeah. And then the we, wind cut her. We sat on the water point going, oh no, poor thing, poor thing. And she just got blown across. She got blown across and, and bit, just pinned up against the, the part of the wharf there. So I... Uh, I didn't film any of it because I thought that would be too cruel. Yeah. I hope this is working. So windy. Yeah, well, live and learn. You, what do you mean live and learn? Well, we live and we learn. To, to listen to your wife? No, no. I mean, if, if, if we go out there and it's too windy, well, we learn not to do that again. I'd rather just not do it in the first place. Anyway. At this point, I think we're fine. The, the guy that was coming down before us um, asked where we were going. When I said we were going up the wash, he said he did it last week and gave us some advice. And he said, as you turn, because it's like a 90 degree turn to get into the air wash but the, the river's flowing quite fast so as you turn the boat just keeps going yeah. so you're, you're, you don't you, to turn the boat turns 90 degrees but you don't have forward motion that way so we need to pull her back in further than 90 degrees and power against and power yeah. so like rev up before you turn yeah. and he also said that once you turn there's like a, a, brick, a bridge and then a lock immediately and that before you get to the bridge so many boats have hit it that all the bricks are like falling down and if you hit it you're going to have bricks coming down on top of you. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking forward to this. I'm not looking forward to this. Well, let's see where we're going to get up to Derwent Mouth. So we've got one lock between us and Derwent Mouth and the, and the flood box. And there will be red lights showing if it's too dangerous to go. So the Swanley Cup. So I might petition for us just to stop in the Swanley Cup for the night. Oh, well, yeah, fair enough. Like, we have that between us and the air wash. So mm -hmm. basically from here down there, there's Derwent Mouth. There's a fairly sheltered section, then there's a river section, then there's Swan Leap. Swan Leap. Swan Leap. Swan Leap. Swan Leap. Swan Leap. 
Swally. 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 I think it's Swally. Anyway, there's the cut. If you want to stay in the cut, we can stay in the cut. Oh, so if the wind how, picks up or anything. We'll see especially. what the first river section's like and then yeah. make a decision. Alright. Well, the water's full, so we should go. Moving on. So, are you walking this section? Yeah. Just going underneath the M1. We made it! We're, yes. on, we're on the Arrowwash. Just above the Trent Lock. And what an exciting day it was. It could have been less exciting, I'll admit that, yeah. I can't even remember, like, coming down that first lock to the water point, seems like forever ago. Oh, we did pass through a little flood floodgates, but those were open. And luckily there were no flashing lights, because that's oh. where they tell you about if there's flooding yeah, or Yeah, it's like, do not waters. proceed here, past here if it's red or something. Yeah, like and it shows for the Trent and the Saw, and they were both off. So we proceeded. Yeah, so we made it to the second lock, um, the Derwent Mouth Lock. We spent an age getting it ready, and then by the time we were going in, there was a little boat with an outboard, a narrow boat with an outboard. Yeah, like a 25 footer or something. That yeah. came through with us, but then. He had some sort of engine problem on the way out. So he had to stop. He couldn't get, he couldn't get his boat started, and then he pulled off to the side to try and repair his engine, so we just carried along. And Joe walked along the um, towpath because 
at the end of the day she was chicken. I got uh, out onto the place where the Derwent meets the Trent meets the well, meets the Trent and Mersey Canal and effectively just like started getting pushed around a bit. But it wasn't like really bad at all. There were some little whirlpooly type things where stuff was joining up. But then as soon as I got to that first large and bridge there, the pipe bridge, yeah. it was just totally calm from that point on. And so. there's not much footage of it because I was such a long way away most of the time. And then, you know, ultimately to the beginning of the Solly Cut, where there's a flood lock that was still closed. It only opens when the river's in uh, green, like there's no uh, warning going on. Yeah, and but the levels were very close, weren't they? They weren't... Yeah, damage. we were right on the edge of green, yeah. so it was like right, right at the point of like they were just going to open the floodgates. In fact, the guy who walked up to me at there, uh, he's the volunteer that that basically runs the flood flood lock and deals with the water levels um, between there and inside the Sully Cut. So he he was telling me that uh, that um, probably tomorrow they'll be they'll be locked open because they're no longer going to be needed. And then coming out of there, like the Sully Cut was, we heard there was more like lots of moorings there, but it was chock a block with boats, wasn't it? Well, there was a marina as well. There was Sawley Marina, and that was full of boats. And then there was lots of towpath moorings that mm -hmm. was just were full. And then we pulled up to the um, automated lock. It's not really automated. Uh, the the. I'm worried about the dog. Power driven lock. So there's three lock keepers working that lock, and hundreds have gone gone goozleless. Yeah. So they they just locked us through, which was nice. Um, gave me a bit of pointers on on how to turn up onto the air wash and how not to smack into the bridge. And we hadn't really discussed about whether I'd be riding or walking, but you were but so. I knew you were going to walk. You were so busy talking to the lock keepers, and I was so busy talking to the walkers that. You that I like, knew you were going to walk. You were like sailing out before, and there was nowhere to pick me up. No, there was a big ladder you could climb down. With and the dog. I could have come around the well, corner. I just tuck the dog under I my arm. I could have come around the corner to where the L sand and everything was, which in the long run which I'm regretting not having done because no. it turns out that the one at the Trent Lock is out of order. But anyway, me and George were safely on dry land. So you know what was funny? What's that? I had my um, life jacket on the whole way, even though I didn't step on the towpath. Yeah, just in case you <laughs> fell off the off the towpath. The Trent went really well. Yeah, I mean the 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 Trent was fine. Um, it, it's it's. It looks longer on the map than it actually feels because you're moving pretty quick. Yeah. Like, I could definitely feel the momentum and the wind kept picking up. I get to the point where there's the sign and it's like, okay, here's the air wash, here's, you know, here's all the different directions you can go in. You can't see really the it's, sign on the air wash canal bridge until you're past it. It's a hidden turning, isn't it? It's almost back on itself. It's more than 90 degrees. Yeah. And it's hidden. Well, so my original plan was to come down and kind of do what, what some of the boaters had said which was to turn in and and um, bank over and then power up against the current. And what the guy at the uh, the Canal and River Trust guy had told me um, at the lock was that it was actually probably better to head down more towards this um, sort of peninsula where there's a yacht club, do a 180 in... Oh, so it was planned? Well, no. See, I did the 180 in the entirely wrong direction. At first, I did this sort of nose towards the air wash, thinking maybe I can do it, but I, I immediately felt like, no, I'm just being pushed along. So then I angle towards the Trent, and I'm heading towards the Trent. And then I started feeling the boat being pushed off past the yacht club. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to basically, like, get my nose into the deepest part of the water and just spin. And so I ended up doing this kind of you know, fishtail maneuver. So like you did 270 instead of 90? Around 270, 300 degrees, yes. <laughs> Basically, I was drifting in a boat. <laughs> and and I, I was walking along, and like he kept going out of, out of view. And I was like, oh, he must have done the turn now. And then I came around the little little corner. I'm like, why is he heading in completely the wrong direction? Are we going down the store now? <laughs> and then it was basically turning around and coming straight up the and air And when wash. I saw you, like, you were spinning, like, like yeah, really yeah. fast. Yeah, it was a fast turn. It was the fastest turn I think I've done. And then I'm, I, you know, I find my nose pointed back kind of towards the canal, and I just power up. And, and it's at this point, I've got control back because I'm facing into the into the current. So it was pretty easy from that point. I mean, we're in the canal mouth now, but there's still wind and movement and kayakers coming in. So we were kind of like on an adrenaline high at this stage. You from your little spinny thing, Whee! me from running and like being worried about you. And then we had this, the Trent lock to do. And um, it was really nice actually. There was like crowds of people watching us through and it was great because they all did the doors for me. And, stuff yeah. and but yeah they were asking you questions and me questions and it's just hard when you're like and there was lots of people watching and when and you're trying to concentrate and be safe and you're well, tired like what was really tired and so yeah we literally just pulled forward we were going to use the l sand but it's out of order but we're literally on the first mooring opposite the houseboats 
Yeah. And then we went to the pub. So I think we're going to stop here for the night. And uh, yeah. I think so. I'm exhausted. It's only like I, I, I'm saying that it wasn't much stress and everything, and it wasn't yeah. much stress, but in a lot of ways, I'm like. I think whenever you do something a bit different, it's exhausting. It's only two o'clock, but um, <laughs> I'm exhausted. Yeah. Okay, so that's the end of the vlog. Our two day vlog. Two day vlog. Oh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. I have to do. So she's going off for poos and then walking, I'm starting oh, the engine. This hasn't been recording. She hasn't been recording this entire time. Ha ha ha! We're gonna, so we're gonna be greeted in today's video by a black screen and a couple of people talking. I get slightly seasick from this camera, everybody. Slightly seasick. I'm Sean Connolly. I'm Frizzy Hair Joe. This is Joe. She's a bomb girl. <laughs> she's an excellent bomb girl. Right, though. We don't know what her bomb name is. Ah! Okay. Right. You're not in frame. I'm not in frame. So this person has a small, very small railway running through their yard. Kibbles. No, that's not a kibble. Eat, yeah, okay, eat the kibble. These double locks that we've been passing, they don't have like, most of them don't have any sort of a bridge oh, across them. Excellent, the wind is picking up. George, come here, come here. George is coming on the boat now. George has refused to come on the boat. George will not be coming on the boat. George is looking at me like, Daddy, Mommy's traitor. Traitor Mommy. Good boy. Oh, George is on the boat now. Beep, beep, beep. George is back. I was pretty nervous about this section. I don't know what I was, I think maybe, I don't know what I was nervous about. So basically we're on the air wash. We've gone canal, a river, met another river came onto another canal, saw two other canals, well, saw one other canal and another river. So it's been an exciting day, lots of water, everything. It's been a good day. It's been interesting, yeah. Okay. All right, we're off? No, you have to you end see the it. lizard? Oh, right. The lizard? The, no, not the lizard. We're off to see the lizard. The wonderful, the wonderful lizard, lizard of Oz. Oz. Because, 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 because of the lizard he was. End the vlog. Why do I always have to end the vlog? Because I get cringe when I say it. Oh, because I'm not cringe when I say like, comment, and subscribe. No, thanks for watching.